There's a reason why Xtrades is currently the fastest growing application on the market for sharing financial ideas. With over $2.5 million paid in the last two years to contributors, users are flocking to see what trades the top traders on the leaderboard are sharing in real time. If you're looking to grow your reputation as a trader on the internet or discuss your trading ideas with other reputable investors, click the link below and get connected with the trading mentor today, completely free of charge. All right, what's up guys? This is Alex from X Trades back to you with another weekly trade ideas list. Hope everybody had a wonderful trading week and are prepared for this week because we are starting to get to that point of the market where it may just be wise to sit on the sidelines. Things are starting to escalate, market pull back a little bit, but we are still holding structures, which is good. We haven't broken any major supports just yet, but we do want to be cautious. So before we get into our individual tickers and the index analysis, let's go ahead and go over the economic calendar real quick. There's a couple data sets I would put some emphasis on. So Monday, nothing scheduled. Tuesday, we do have the U.S. services PMI and also U.S. manufacturing PMIs. Definitely keep those on watch. Wednesday, new home sales. This can move the market as well. Most importantly, on Thursday, the GDP. This is probably going to move the market the most. And then I would say pending home sales maybe as well. Durable goods orders, retail inventories, and wholesale inventories. Always a hit or miss. So GDP and pending home sales is the ones I'm watching the most. And then most importantly, on Friday, this is a big inflation gauge. This is personal income, personal spending, and the PCE index. So PCE is actually the Fed's preferred inflation gauge, as you've probably heard in videos prior. They prefer this over the CPI, so markets put a pretty good amount of emphasis on this data set. And then we also have consumer sentiment at 10. So that's for the economic calendar. Most importantly, obviously, is going to be the PCE. And I would say the services PMI, manufacturing PMIs, and then probably new home sales and pending home sales, I would say has the most effect on the market. And for earnings this week, lots of big names. You can see we have Microsoft on Tuesday. We have Google on Tuesday as well, Snap, Visa. And then we have Meta after the close on Wednesday. Then we also have Amazon after the close on Thursday. And then lots of energy sector names on Friday. So lots of big names this week. So it's definitely gonna be pretty risky to hold anything overnight while these earnings are getting released. It might be wise to just stick to swinging the indexes, sticking to the SPY and the QQQ rather than individual tickers with options because it can get a little bit scary and a little bit volatile with the individual names because you just have no idea how it's gonna go. It's a total coin toss. All right, for a quick look on seasonality, you can see we actually do average a negative 0.43% return this week for the 23rd to the 27th, which is our trading week this week. Last week, we pretty much had a straight up move for the seasonality, but we actually had a dip last week. So it only followed the seasonality Monday and Tuesday because they were bullish. And then we had a big dip after that. So like I said before, seasonality is always a hit or miss. You just kind of want to use it as a general guide for the overall trend on the month rather than on a week to week basis. But we do look at it, you know, just to get a little insight into how the seasonality looks historically. And it looks like this week we average a dip so just be careful with that just a little half percent dip almost all right let's go ahead and get into our individual tickers here our first one i'm looking at is bbwi here it's bath and body works it's a retail name it held really good relative strength on friday you can see it was actually up 1.27 percent while the markets were down you had spy down 1.23 and QQQ down almost 1.5. So it looks like it held really good relative strength. There's also a drop base rally demand zone here, which I really like. And it's also holding up the 3050s as support. If we zoom out right here, you got support right here and support right here. Another good thing about the retail names right now, we're starting to get into that holiday season. So we could see a bid up in the retail names. Obviously last week they caught a big with the retail sales. So that was able to give it a push for a couple days until the markets kind of shit the bed. I really like how it reacted off demand. Nice bullish hammer here. Obviously, it probably needs to get over 31.22. You can see that 31.22 comes from right here. If it can get over that, it'll probably fill up this little sell imbalance and try to get back up to 32.74. And then overall, I feel like eventually it's probably going to try to come back up to this downtrend line. You can see there's a test one, test two, test three downtrend line. So maybe it can w make its way back up to there. But, you know, you just want to take it one level at a time. So right now, 32.74. That'd probably be your area of resistance if it can get up there. So BBWI, looking at calls, stay cautious with longs this week. Go smaller. You don't have to go all in on everything this week because markets are at a very big level and we're in very uncertain times. We got tensions in the Middle East. We got economic indicators collapsing. We got a 
bunch of stuff, lots of cracks starting to show in the financial system. So you just want to be careful. So BBWI, looking at calls, looking for that 3274 to get tested eventually. All right, next we're looking at MS here. This is Morgan Stanley. It is at a very major 7205 support here. I'm looking for a bid to get formed here, hopefully. Obviously, this weekly candle doesn't look very good. You got it down 6% almost just on this one weekly bar from last week. So very weak in terms of the overall trend, but we are pulling into this major support. So I'd like to see a bid hold up here, potentially. Obviously, you need to wait for confirmation. You don't want to see it gapping under this level on Monday. If we, for some reason, the futures gap down heavy, maybe from tensions in the Middle East or whatever reason, want to see it holding this 7205 for sure. As long as it's holding over this or the general area, I feel like it could catch a bid and then we can make our way back up to supply right here. This is a big, looks like a drop base drop zone. So that's the supply, you got drop, base, drop. So this candle led to this big sell imbalance right here. So maybe we can fill it back up eventually. Obviously you wanna take it one day and level at a time. Maybe buy time on this, be patient, and definitely keep an eye on banks and the XLF ETF, which covers the whole financial sector. And just make sure the 7205 is holding. If for some reason that breaks, you know, just go ahead and throw in the towel. And if it starts closing under it, definitely start throwing in the towel because there's a big, big, flush zone under this you can see under 7205 this is all like kind of free space to fall obviously there's a little level right here at 57s there's a little base right here at 6685 but that's about it so under 7205 pretty much straight shot down to 6685 so you want to be careful make sure this is holding first get some type of confirmation and you should be good the reason why i'm sticking to kind of looking for dip buys in this market is mainly because of seasonality and towards the end of the year the markets do tend to rally a little bit higher wall street tends to try and close the year out good there's a lot of pressure to do well in performance so hopefully we can see that this year i'm hoping there won't be too much downside in the market obviously we might need a little flush to kind of get all the longs out get people liquidated in order to make that move higher but we'll have to see so ms here i'm looking at calls just be cautious at 7205 make sure it's holding over that if it can do that Obviously, we can see that move up higher, maybe get up to demand, fill this little small gap. So I'm looking for 7205 to hold. Hopefully, we can hold that up. If we can, obviously, it can go lower. But otherwise, if we can hold this up, there's a nice base here at 7205, make its way back up to supply eventually. Can't really put a timeline on when this would hit. Obviously, it could take, you know, it could take a week, it could take a couple weeks, it could take a month. Who knows? Buy time on contracts. It's the easiest way to not have to put a timeline on the market. You can let the market dip. You can let it chop, let it play out before it makes this move. Because every time it pulls into support, it's just not going to go straight up all the time. So just be careful. MS, looking at calls very cautiously. Watch 7205. Make sure it holds. All right. And last but not least for our individual tickers, looking at Tesla here. Not my favorite ticker to trade, but last time we looked at Tesla, we were looking at this demand over here. And I think it bounced somewhere over here and there's a nice long to the upside so we were able to make some money on that to the upside this time it's pulling into major support here you can see we got 212.36 this is a major low close just a little bit under that but not enough to you know make me too discouraged obviously monday it would need to open over 212.36 so it needs to like open over it or it just needs to if it does gap down for some reason it needs to reclaim over that before looking at longs so make sure 212.36 is holding. I'm looking for a bounce off this area, just a short term one maybe. And you can see that the trend has really changed since the last time we looked at Tesla. We got a test one, test two, probably even draw it like this as well. You got test one, test two, test three, test four. So just the overall uptrend line that broke after their earnings. So the trend has changed. It's a little bit different. So you need to be a little bit more cautious. This is more of a contrarian type of play. And you do want to be careful with that. Make sure that it's holding 212.36 or reclaiming over it first before trying to go long. And then maybe it could fill the sell imbalance up a little bit. Obviously, with the trend broken here, it's definitely a different dilemma. So you want to be careful with that. Like I said, just make sure the level is holding. Make sure we open over it or make sure we reclaim it before taking anything. Maybe if it breaks under 212.36, we can start looking at shorts here. But it looks just a little bit oversold on the shorter term time frames. So if we go down to the one hour, it just looks very oversold. And you can see that the slow stochastic is just beat up. So it's a tough short down here. You want to be careful with that. Eventually, these Oscar escalators like to try to reset come back up before trying to go lower so it might need a reset that's why i feel like maybe eventually uh 212.36 we can break over that and then maybe we can make a little run to the upside 
I'm mostly looking at day trades on this. Probably not swing trades. Last time we were just looking at day trades. So, I mean, if you did a swing trade the last time we had Tesla calls on our list, you probably would have made pretty good money. But I would just stick to day trades on this. Keep a short term mindset because you don't have no idea how this 21236 is going to hold. And there's also just like a broad negative view on Tesla right now after their earnings. So you just want to be careful with that. We're also closing under the 200 SMA, as you can see right here. So just a little bit risky. Slow stochastic, still negative. So you just want to be careful with that. Like I said, make sure it's holding over 212.36. Make sure it's reclaiming over that before taking anything. And you should be good. Otherwise, just keep your risk off, you know, at that 212 area, maybe just 212 flat. So that's for Tesla looking at calls. Make sure the criteria is met first. 212.36, keep that in your brain. All right, and on to the indexes here. We're looking at SPY, which is at a major, major support here. So we're at a major 42018 structure low. You can see this is our lows from the beginning of October. We are down here right now. So I don't want to get too bearish here yet until it starts breaking under that, obviously. And at the same time, you don't want to get too bullish here because you have three major red candles here in a row. You have no types of holding up, no types of one day candles that are holding bullish, nothing like that. So at 420s, you definitely wanna see like some type of one day close holding up here, showing that bids can be caught and that we could hold up the general area as support. Obviously Monday's open is gonna have a huge impact on you know kind of where we go for the day. Just based off this week close on Friday, there's a good chance we could see a little bit more downside that down Friday, down Monday effect. And yes, that is a real pattern. So you want to be careful with that. So if down Friday, down Monday is holding, we definitely want to be careful and maybe wait to buy Tuesday and try to buy the dip on Tuesday, just because that's usually what the pattern is. They, you know, take it down Friday, they take it down basically all day Monday. And then Tuesday is when you see that turnaround. But overall, this 420.18, I would really like to look to try to buy the dips in this area. Obviously, we need to see the VIX coming down. It's over 21.70, so volatility is pretty high right now. You want to be careful with that. But 420.18 to 418.30s is your level of focus. You definitely want to watch that. The 418s comes from right over here. That's February 2023. It's a peak. And then your 42018 comes from this low right here as well. So that's just your level of focus. We need to hold this up. And then you don't want to get too bearish until we break under the 41830s. Because if it starts getting under that, you are starting to enter back in this old resistance and you're starting to get to these lower levels down here. So this is a huge inflection point. The market's definitely going to be watching very closely at these levels. These are pretty scary levels. But last time we got down here, things escalated very quickly and we caught a bid. So we basically gave up all the progress we made in October and that's okay. It happens. Markets are in a totally different environment than, you know, 2020 and 2021. There's rate hikes, there's inflation risks, there's macro risks, lots of stuff. So just watch 42018 and 41831. That's your level of focus. Keep it simple. If it, you know, can catch a bid off this area, you can start looking to buy dips. Look for shorter term signals in order to buy dips. And then as well, if it starts breaking under 41830s, you can start to get a little bit bearish there because that's where it starts to get a little bit scary. So this is a huge inflection point. You're going to be waiting for a signal on one of these. All right, next we're going into QQQ. So this one is also at a major inflection point. We are at the 354.71 structure lows we've been focused on for weeks. We're focused on this area as a dip buy level the last time it came here. I'm gonna keep the same energy at this level and hopefully look for dip buys in this area as well. There's also a drop base rally demand zone. You can see that it held up really good. So it got created after it put in this high right here pulled in, had a nice bounce off this one day candle. Looks like it had a nice wick off it right here. And then the big impulse candle off the demand right here. So you could either say that the 354.71 was the reason, or you could say that this drop based rally demand was as well, or you could just call it both. I'm looking at both. So the demand zone goes as low as 351.36, as long as we're holding above that. You know, I can't get too bearish yet. If we start breaking under that, obviously definitely can get bearish here. There's a lot of downside. And this is a big structure hold, so we must hold it. The only difference about this close compared to when we were looking at the structure lows the last time is that these candles are much more bearish than before. At least we had somewhat signs of 354.70s holding. Like you got a big lower shadow wick on this bar right here. You got a good reaction candle right here. You have a reaction candle right here. And then a big reaction candle right here as well. We need to start seeing some reaction candles to this level in order to see a shoe back up. So definitely look for those on the one day time frame. You're gonna to need to start seeing one day closes to kind of get that signal and to start getting those bars, giving you a sign that this level can hold up confidently. So it's okay to be patient this week. You know, wait for those one day closes if you must. Sit on the sidelines, look in the bonds maybe. A lot of them are paying 5% just to keep your money on the sidelines. So you don't have to do anything this week. I mean, you can wait for the earnings to blow over. 
You can wait for the risks to blow over. You can wait for the VIX to come down and also wait for those one day bars to start forming so you can get a better bias. Start looking for bars like this, something giving you a signal, right? Like some type of reaction to the major level. And right now, Friday's close didn't give you that. So that's why you want to be cautious. I'm going to be looking for a dead bias in this area. I'm just not probably not going to look at it quite yet. I want to see some type of reaction and I do need to see the open first. So I can't give you a straight answer just yet, but I'm definitely watching this area to start buying dips. Like I said, it just depends. So that's for QQQ at an inflection point, just like spy, be cautious. Like I said, you could probably sit on the sidelines right now and probably wouldn't be missing out too much. I definitely don't want to short into this demand. And on SPY, I definitely don't want to short into the lows. You need to see the lows get taken out first. Start breaking those with confirmation, like a one day candle close below the structure lows. Then you can start looking at shorts because you know you're not going to get blasted out of the water at these lows like it did right here. So that's why you want to be cautious. QQQ, same thing as SPY, both the structure lows. Just be careful. All right. And last but not least, we'll go over the VIX this week just because volatility is starting to enter a new little era here. We are now over the 2133 peak, which is all the way from May 2023. And then there's just a bunch of area to fill up here up to 3081. You can see this is all kind of like free space. I guess you could count this peak right here at 2521. You could probably count this little bar right here at 2891. But this whole area right here, this 2133 to 25 is kind of free space. So the VIX absolutely needs to get back under 2133, which is this peak right here. Needs to get back under 2081 and a peak right here and a peak right here and a peak right here. So 2081 is a huge level. We absolutely need to get back under that in order for volatility to start selling back off. Right now, we got the close over 2133. So th this is a clear sign to be cautious. Definitely not my typical dip buy type of signal. For a dip buy, I'm usually looking for volatility to sell off aggressively, or I'm looking for volatility to get to an extreme point, such as way up here, way up here, like an extreme, you know what I mean? Where I know that just because of the fact that volatility went up so aggressively that I know it's going to come back down and shoot back down real quick. And right now we're kind of in the middle, right? We're just breaking over 2133. So this is a fresh breakout and fresh volatility signal that could still go higher. So we either want to wait for it to get a little bit higher up to 25s or wait for it to break down under 2081. That signal under 2081 is going to signal some type of volatility sell off. It's going to probably calm things down a little bit and then markets might try to rally under that. So just watch that 2081 signal. Look for it to go under that maybe before trying to buy the dip. So that could give us an answer there for SPY and QQQ. If we do want to start buying dips, we could wait for VIX to give that signal under 2081. And then that would also probably start making the SPY and QQQ both hold those structure lows we were just looking at if volatility can sell off. But if it starts to amplify here, the structure lows are just going to butter through on SPY and QQQ and everything else. So just be careful with that. Otherwise, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to our X-Trades YouTube channel. I'm going to go ahead and get this chopped up, edited, and sent out. I love you guys, and I'm out.